Hello everybody. It's Friday. It's drama free Friday we hope. That's the plan anyway. Hello Joan and Evelyn. Good to see you all. Hope you're doing well today. Here comes Chance. You guys let me know everything's okay in the chat. That would be great. Sound is okay. Video is good. Yes, no. Okay. Okay, Joan is busy making cards. That's good. That's good. Good to see you guys. Joan's cards are remarkable. That is for sure. I'm going to go ahead and change this thing. Because it will be definitely be easier. Except I never can remember how to change it. Hello, Terry. I know, he's here. He is absolutely here. I'm changing my ATG, which should have been done before this, but I didn't remember. <laughs> I didn't remember that I needed to change it. So there you go. And there are aspects of using the ATG, which is an advanced tape glider. There are aspects of it that make it so much easier than using the... Uh, score tape type tape anyway so come on in and make yourselves at home while I um, fiddle around with this every time I change the tape I have to get out the instructions hello purple Nana chances right here by me yes he is all right, let me take all this garbage off. Yeah, like I said, you get to watch me in the struggle because it's real. The struggle is real. So tell me how your week is. How's your week going? I hope you're doing great. All right. This goes on this, this under here. I'm sorry that I didn't have this done ahead of time. And like I said, I have to look it up every time. <laughs> every time. Okay, this goes. Over there, under here. But you have to have the sticky in the right spot. We may give up on this. Yeah, we may give up on this. Just depends. Adhesive here, if not. Yeah, I have a note to myself. You guys will enjoy the note. It says the adhesive is here. If not, it's screwed up. Okay, tell you what, I will deal with this later. I cannot do this on camera. Yeah, this won't work on camera. So we'll use score tape today. Mm -hmm. And I will deal, I will wrestle that bear later. Yeah. Hello, Barbara Clark. Hello, hello. It's good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me. Chance is here. He's doing a hundred, he says. He thought I should tell you that. He's doing great. Yeah, he's right here beside me. Do you want to come over here and get on my lap for a minute? 
He's right here on the chair beside me. Anyway. It's a great Friday in Indiana for Terry. That is great. Hello, Peggy. Hi, scrappy girl Dana. Um, now you're going to relax. Good, Linda. Purple Nana Linda is here. Busy, busy here, making cards and designing new stencils. Good for you, Joan. Joan design, designed stencils for eye stencils, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that is great. It is, it is an absolutely beautiful day here today. Gorgeous day. Um, sunshiny. It's cool, but it's sunshiny. Oh, no. Elvis. Elvis is in the house. Hello, Elvis. I was in your stomping grounds last week. Not really. I was in Las Vegas last weekend. Um, yeah, so here's the boy. I tell you, he's the incredible shrinking cat. He's just getting thinner and thinner. But he still has a good attitude. My nose is still running because of whatever is blooming outside. <sighs> anyway, um, but he is, he is like a tick. He's like the incredible shrinking cat. He used to be, from the front, you used to see him, like imagine this is his head that I'm showing you. His body would come back like this and he got to his belly. and <laughs> It was just like this huge balloon. The vet and everybody would go, he's too fat. And it's like, I know he's too fat. Did you tell him? You should tell him he's too fat. And now everybody's, the vets and everybody are like, oh, he's awfully thin. It's like, you know, I feed him wet food. I feed him dry food. He has food all the time. He likes to lick the dishes when I'm done. <laughs> it's not like the cat is starving. But, anyway, he may have some, you know, he's 17. He may have something going on inside. And until he can't go any further, we're going to just enjoy him. Hello, Marion. Good to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Yeah, he's a, he's a mess, this one. A um, couple things to show you. I went to book club yesterday and which is at a local local to me scrapbook and mixed media store I mean local as in 15 miles away or so and so we started a new book the way this book club functions is that they the group kind of votes on a new book that's mixed media type book and um, we've been doing this for I don't know how many years I've lost track quite a few years so I've accumulated quite a few books from uh, from the book club I don't always get to do what they're doing sometimes I do not too often but this one is particularly interesting and I thought you guys might enjoy seeing this book and also we might do some stuff from this book in um, here on streams. So I'm going to show it to you. Joan's dog has asthma. Yep. There's just always something, you know. There's always something with them. They're animals, especially when they get old. Poor Muppet, this morning I had to wake her up. She was on the couch, where she most generally is. She has her own couch. <laughs> it's, a, it's a love seat. It's miserably uncomfortable to sit on, so I don't mind letting the dog have it. I have it covered with, uh, you know, rugs and towels and stuff, just to try to control some of the dog hair, etc. And... Uh, Anyway, she was so sound asleep. That is one thing that's going on with her now. She is sleeping so soundly. Uh, she will be 16 here shortly. Since we adopted her, 
when she was, they guessed, roughly eight months old. We don't know when her birthday was. But she's somewhere between now and August. <laughs> she's going to be 16. I don't know when exactly. But anyway, I had to wake her up this morning to get her to go outside. And she was, she can't hear. She doesn't see a lot. And um, so I'm talking to her and talking to her. Of course, she can't hear anything. And so, and if I touch her, sometimes she it really startles her. And so I finally just real gently touched her head, and she kind of opened her eyelids. <laughs> and you can just tell she's like, "Where am I? And what am I doing here?" She's just kind of like that. She's a funny, funny girl. So I. Um, patted her and patted her and scratched her under her chin and stuff and she finally came to she finally woke up enough that I'm like come on come on you know trying to get her up and going because I had some stuff I had to do before I streamed and so she finally got off the couch I mean she is this is a dog that for years has just charged off the couch and she has gone outside and her hackles will go up and her tail goes up and she charges out there and she says i am here this is my world and this is my backyard and by golly nobody's gonna screw around with me and that's this dog and so for her to be in this space is quite an adjustment i have to tell you quite an adjustment so i have to allow extra time for her now to get her out extra time to you know do her business you know everything takes time I know, bless her heart. Um, so I just enjoy her, you know. We just enjoy her, and I just have to make the allowance for extra time because that's just, <laughs> it's just the way it is, isn't it? And so the, I think it was yesterday I was working on the thing that I'm going to show you. And yesterday I was sitting on the couch. I had a TV series going. I just put on some mindless something on TV just so it's, something in the background that I don't have to watch I can just listen and um, chance comes over you know if I don't put the lap desk I have a lap desk that I put on my lap so I can work on it it's a hard surface with a soft um, like a pillow type thing under it that I got at the bookstore years ago and if I don't have that on my lap he crawls onto my lap and he just you know it's he's just like a tick you know he's just and I'll someday I'll really, really, really miss him. I know that. But boy, when I'm trying to get something done, <laughs> it can be so annoying sometimes. Anyway, the dog is on the couch, <clears throat> which is adjacent to me. I mean, like I can reach out and touch her. And he has gotten brave in his old age. And so he goes, I'm sitting very close to where the dog is on the adjacent couch. And so he just decides, he gets this look on his face, and I hadn't got the lap desk on my lap yet. He gets this look on his face, and I know what he's going to do. I know what he's going to do. He is preparing to dare the dog. He is going to dare the dog. And so he starts putting his little feet kind of off my lap, and the dog doesn't move. Because she doesn't hear him. She's sound asleep. And so he takes another step and he gets ready to step over on the couch, right? He's going to step over there. And I'm like, Chance, you are absolutely not going to do this because he's getting ready to go over there and walk around the dog. Well, she still can smell. <laughs> it's like you're an idiot, aren't you? So we had to have a little uh, separation of dog and cat because she's she, Muppet is still not going to have she's she's not she's not gone enough that she's not going to recognize that believe me <laughs> she is going to know that anyway so that was that um yes okay so that is that is cat and dog update all right so I will show you this um book this is the new the new book for book club and I thought we'll look through it just a little bit 
and then we'll get going here. But this may be what we do starting on Monday. I know I wasn't here last Friday. I was not here last Friday because I was in Las Vegas at a fundraiser with the Studley Duck for uh, where his daughter-in-law works and the, the nonprofit that she works for, which is called Olive Crest. And it is a an organization that supports families and children. It's like a stopgap between the state and people who need help, temporary help. So if any of you are interested, looking for a worthwhile um, organization to support, I heartily encourage you to look it up. It's O-L-I-V-E-C-R-E-S-T. Uh, anyway, that's where I was last week. So that was um, in that was on Friday, Friday noon, and then Friday night we went to a Cirque du Soleil, and any of you that didn't hear that story should listen to Monday night so that you know the real name for Cirque du Soleil. Just saying. Okay, so anyway, this is the book that we're going to do this time, this um, in book club. Ugh, I really need to get a new mat, don't I? <laughs> I really do. I keep saying it, and then I, it's just, when I'm not here, it's out of sight, out of mind, you guys, so... Anyway, sorry about, I, at least it looks like I've been doing something, right? At least it looks like a creative space back here. Maybe it has, oh, chance. Huh, maybe it has a certain ambiance. <laughs> it does, Terry. She says, my mat shares my experiences. It does, that is for sure. Anyway. So this is the book, uh, Share Your Joy, Mixed Media Shareable Art. This is not a book I was familiar with. It is put out by, uh, it's a Walter Foster book. And the author is Sarah Gardner, Sarah J. Gardner. So it, there's some real interesting things in it. And I thought we might just go through this as a, as a thing here. I, I'm not familiar with the book. There may be other people that have done things in the book. But if you're interested in um, doing something, following along, or if you're looking for something, the techniques are fairly simple, but you can come up with a lot of uh, things that you make yourself, like this, your own papers, and different ideas for texture and color and patterns and painting marks and all that kind of stuff if you're interested in that kind of thing um, you can look on Amazon for the book or your local bookstore if you have one might have it Barnes & Noble here which is the only bookstore that I really have close to me is um, they often carry a lot of the Walter Foster books so anyway, um, I thought that I'll just flip through some of it just so you can see. So we may do some of this. Uh, a lot of it, most of it, is based on making your own papers and then turning them into things like journal covers, ephemera for other projects, note cards, uh, mobiles, or mobiles or cutting them apart and weaving them together which I love to do it's time-consuming but I love to do it um, anyway just making it's not that store-bought or purchased supplies aren't good um, you know scrapbook papers painting papers mixed-media papers they're fine but if you like doing your own things like these are postcards if you like doing your own things and having your own art throughout your whole whatever it is that you send out or whatever you share, whatever you make, this is a great resource for ideas for doing exactly that. So there you go. Share Your Joy, Mixed Media Shareable Art by Sarah J. Gardner. So there you go. I just thought I would show you that. So we may be doing some things with that, probably starting Monday. 
And the only other thing that I bought is, no, that's not true. I'm going to say the only other thing I bought, that's not entirely true because I did buy some stencils yesterday, but they're elsewhere, um, is you're going to know exactly why I bought these. <laughs> Those of you that have been hanging around me for a while are going to know exactly why I bought these. Um, they're butterfly rub-ons, and they're from the company Simple Stories. And there's two sheets. They're $4 per sheet for at this particular store. So this is the front. This is one sheet. This is the other. I got two packages because, you know, it can never have too many good things in your life. Any too many pretty butterflies, you can see. Um, I love the rub-ons and we did some of that in the uh, travel journal that I worked on and showed you guys so yeah you just received some rub-ons from 49 and market 49 and market has some really beautiful things I think that was what I had that I bought for the travel journal I think and they worked very well and so I'm assuming that these will work equally well. I will probably use wow. these in my regular daily journal. I managed to spend one entire journal, the one that I took on my trip when I went to Australia and New Zealand. I started a journal when I went on that trip, and I managed to do the entire journal beginning to end, which about half of it, was after the trip was over in writing in pencil and then I'm like I never write in pencil never <laughs> I can't say that anymore because now I have yeah I inspired you aren't those butterflies pretty I know they're just beautiful they really are beautiful and that one of the things I love personally about rub-ons when I'm using them, because I use them in my journals. My journals I use, for the most part, I've settled pretty much on a moleskin lined journal. I've used all the different papers in the moleskins, and there, there are advantages to all of them. Graph paper, the dot journals, the, you know, except the plain paper. I can't write straight. <laughs> I don't have something to guide me. I will go uphill or downhill or, you know, and sometimes that's fun too, but... Um, the thing that I like about the rub-ons in the journals is that they uh, they let whatever is underneath show through so it lets the lines show through or if I have you know if I have some stuff I've written but I don't really really want to cover it up but I don't really want it super public I can put a rub-on over the top of it and you can still see there's writing under it without necessarily having it like in your face Oh, I influenced Barbara Clark to um, go looking for the 49 and Market rub-ons. They really are beautiful. That she had um, at the store here, she had some really, I mean, that's one of the things that I do, I am attracted to, and I do like that sort of, it's not really grungy because I think of grunge as more the brown and uh, darker tones that's what I think of but it's the more it's grungy in terms of not real even um, borders and things like you know there could be something that looks like it's torn or something that has a raggedy you know like a splat or a raggedy edge or something like that I like that look so I think of it as kind of grungy but not totally chance is now ready he is now ready to have some treats and go lay in the sunshine. So I will be right back. Yeah, come on, come on. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. All right, have a good rest. Have a good nap. He will now be uh, sun drunk for the rest of the afternoon <laughs> he is a mess Sharon likes 49 market 49 market is it 49 and market I don't know what it is 49 market that's in the title <sighs> okay so that's all the new things that I had to tell you about the any of you that are here that are VIP members your classes tomorrow email went out today 
uh, with the link. Uh, so you have all that information in your inbox. So let's see. Last week, last Friday night, I went to a production of Cirque du Soleil. Um, it was the Beatles production. Uh, called it was Beatles production is incorrect. It was based on the Beatles music, and it was called Love. That was the name of it, Cirque du Soleil. Like I said, if you don't, if you didn't watch me on uh, last Monday night, you might want to go back and watch that so you know the real pronunciation, the real name of uh, Cirque du Soleil. And that, if I haven't teased you, that should tease you. Hello, Anne. You love Cirque shows. First one I'd ever been to. It was really neat. Okay, so based on that, I decided, I was very inspired by it. Uh, I wasn't a huge Beatles fan when I was growing up. Uh, it, they were they were a little bit before um, they were a little bit before I was I mean like when I was in I, I don't know junior high I don't know I don't know but anyway when I was growing up the Beatles were definitely up and coming I mean I remember seeing them on the uh, Ed Sullivan show. I do remember that. I remember mom and dad not being terribly impressed because their hair was long, uh, too long. They were not well kept. They were not uh, tidy and trim, you know. And so I remember that. And then they were super, super big as I was, you know, as I went on into my high school days and stuff. But I was, I was a uh, studying piano and flute and I accompanied the choir and you know I was accompanying for um, all the I was one of the main accompanists for kids when we went to music contests plus I was preparing my own stuff and you know music classical music is what absorbs me back then so although I remember a lot of the songs and all that kind of stuff, and it was music that was always played at the dances and things that we went to, which didn't happen all that often, but when it did, the Beatles music and Rolling Stones and the Monkees and I don't know who all else, I don't remember, Bee Gees, I don't know, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, that was all very, very popular. And so uh, going to the Cirque du Soleil production of Beatles Love, uh, was very interesting and so I, the, what caught me the most I mean I enjoyed the music but what caught me the most was the overload of music of um, pattern and color and you know all that sensory overload stuff and so that's what um, inspired me and so I spent some time drawing and so I thought I would show you the finished. I don't know if I had this finished or not, honestly. I don't remember if I did, but don't think I had this finished when we were together on Monday. I think I was still doing it on Monday, right? I should show you the process. Hold on a minute. I did not buy any souvenirs or anything when I was at the production. I I don't need any more stuff in my life, honestly. That doesn't stop me from getting things, but I try I'm trying very hard to control how much crap I bring into my life now. And so I uh didn't buy anything, but I did take a couple of pictures. I didn't take very many because I decided I just wanted to be part of what was going on right be in the moment and so um, I took a couple of pictures at the end of the production the last scene in the whole show 
which was just one uh, one sensory experience after another after another after another and uh, all right I gotta find my here I will show you this just so that you have so you understand where this started okay so this is aside from the guy that popped up right as I was taking the picture this is the final scene in the uh, stage production this is when they're doing their bows and all that kind of thing but you can see that the colors here are not totally accurate in reproduction there were a lot more pinks and oranges than they were this you know extremely yellow red cast um, so I don't know you can see a little bit more of the pink back in here these were translucent curtains that were part of it and this thing right here came up out of the stage I mean they really are masterful masterful with the Cirque productions at deception not really deception but d directing your attention and so you know you're looking at one thing over here and then something rises out of the floor and then the floor becomes one you know uh, flat I don't know I don't know how they do it I really don't but there were different entrances onto this it was in the round those are people back there we're sitting on this side and it was really interesting to sit, how they would direct your attention and then all of a sudden everything would change but you can see the designs in this and so I was heavily impressed shall we say by color and design and the nostalgia of the whole thing okay so that's the that's the inspiration where the inspiration came from in um, in all of this so I started then um, based on that then I had a sketchbook which is conveniently called it's actually called an art book uh, Canson art book 180 180 and I do like this I like this binding um, this is a great binding because it's kind of like a, and it may be a, I can't tell for sure, but it could be a Coptic stitch. I really can't tell because they have fabric on it. It is a stitched book. Anyway, so I just got out a pencil and I just started, you know, kind of sketching. I did look up some different things as inspiration online and um, so I just started playing around with that and then I thought you know it's I kind of got my bearings a little bit and I thought okay that's enough uh, I got to stop doing stuff here it's time to just go to the actual you know make it happen kind of thing so I looked around in my uh, I was gonna go do something on watercolor paper and I was trying in my head you know it takes a while for things in my head to sort of come out you know I think about it for a while and then it's like okay where is what shall I do well I ended up finding as I was looking for kind of a hot press watercolor paper I came across two pieces from something else these were mop-up sheets from something else okay so this is one of them this happened to come from uh, I think a mandala from one of the mandala classes that I had prepared and so this is the mop-up sheet this was the cool color tone I often do things in a warm version and a cool version because people have different preferences and sometimes I want to work in the cool tones which is think of tones of the sea blue green purple aqua teal turquoise those kinds of things um, so I'll do one of those and then I'll do one in the warm tones which is think of colors of the sun colors of heat colors of summer so orange yellow um, 
red, orange, red, pinks, those kinds of things. So often I will do that. So I grab the, the warm toned ones first. And um, yes, I had everything in order here. Here we go. I had it all in order and then I disorganized myself. So this was, you can see how it was just a partial warm toned piece. Okay. And then I just started using my initial inspiration. Hello, Ruth. Using my initial sketches that I was just playing around with. Use that as a jumping off point and you can see how it started developing then. I put a lot more paisleys into this because paisleys, I remember how big paisleys were back then. You know, this was back in the day where the the um, bell bottoms, you know, the pant legs were about at least this big around. Uh, just normal everyday pant legs. The best part of that was it made your butt look small. <laughs> they did. They seriously made your rear end look a lot smaller when you've got this these bell bottom pants. But man, they could trip you going up the stairs. <laughs> they could really trip you. Anyway, so uh, paisleys were a big deal back then. So this is what I did, and I just doodled and drew. And I did it all in pencil first, then I went back and inked it. And I tried different inking thing, different inking instruments. This was the black Posca pen in the finest point, And I thought, that's a little bigger than I really want. So then I switched to a black Jelly Roll pen and inked the rest of it in a black Jelly Roll pen. When the ink was totally dry, then um, I was ready to just use the white plastic eraser and take all the marks off of it, okay? So I've done two things with this. One is I've scanned it into the computer, so I have it. The other thing is I went to my the closest copy place that I have to be able to do laser copies, and that is the UPS store. And so you have to know when you go to those places, that you cannot be attached to an absolute um, duplicate reproduction because it's never going to copy exactly the same. Okay, so this was copied this way. Yes. So for whatever reason, they didn't quite, this was copied on eight and a half by 11 cardstock, white cardstock. The color is different. You know, the oranges didn't reproduce accurately but you know it's like okay good enough I gotta I gotta be able to live with it but for whatever reason you know they only got they didn't fill the whole sheet of the cardstock and I was like okay I can live with that um, I, I didn't really notice that until later because they could have gotten more but they didn't so it's like all right so I got several copies of that and then I also had them scan or copy it on 11 by 17 paper which meant that they got the entire thing okay so they got the whole sheet on 11 by 17 and so I got the entire all of the artwork but at the time they said they only had paper so I copied part of part of them on cardstock the rest of it is copied on uh, just 11 by 17 paper okay so far so good I'm just telling you the process then I brought them home and I thought actually not quite true I went to a coffee shop sat down and I was trying to figure out this the, my favorite part of this process of doing this kind of stuff is the figuring it out I have a horrible time finishing <laughs> something so I'm going to give myself a giant pat on the back because I did finish this, by the way. And I've got that to show you. Um, and so I did sit there and start I just processing how I wanted to color it because I liked having the background, but I also had this white strip area. And so how to color this and make it kind of look like it went together and blah, blah, blah. And so I decided to use 
highlighters and markers. Okay, so that's what I did. All right, so here is, now what I'm gonna show you is the, um, it's a little warped, but what I'm gonna show you is the cardstock version. So this is white cards, this is the cardstock copy I did not start on the original piece. I was going to, and then I thought, nah, I'm gonna use the copy and see what it does. Well, I like the copy because the I, it wasn't watercolor paper. This was really smooth. And so for markers, it worked really well. Okay, so this is what it looked like on cardstock, white cardstock, using highlighters. Okay, just highlighters, different brands of highlighters. Um, I also tried a little bit of some of the Sharpie Creative Markers, and those are great, except that they are opaque. And so that's why they show up on black, because they're opaque. Um, but it will, if it shows up on black, then it will obscure the black lines, okay? Not what I was going for. I wanted, to make it easy on myself and that's what made me reach for highlighters okay so there's that and then I got one of those 11 by 17 this is paper this is cardstock got one of the 11 by 17 copies and this one this has a little bit now and then it had some of the the sharpie uh, creative markers like here um, and those are super opaque and dense which doesn't let the background come through and, you know it's just a, a process of figuring it out and trying things this is all done with highlighters and it all is all done on paper the paper copy but it's a laser copy and because it's laser the um, action the wet action of the highlighter doesn't obscure it so that's why it works really well okay so there's that all right so these were done so then i thought all right i don't want to use up the original artwork because there's a lot of work that went into these so i scanned these in the computer so i have them and took these with me to back to the copy place which is the UPS store and I had them copy them again so this is now this is a copy of this okay so yet again the colors are maybe obscured a little bit but I think they they um, they colored pretty well. The pink may be a little different, but I think it copied awfully well. This is the original design, and that's a copy. So I think that was pretty good. Well, this time, don't you know, they fished around and they found some lightweight cardstock. And so this is on cardstock. And then I also had the other one copied, the smaller one. And so there is that. So I have them on paper as well as the lightweight cardstock, you know, because, you know, quite honestly, because that is what I do. It is called overkill, right? It is just called overkill. So I will just do lots of copies when probably two would be enough. I will do lots of, it wasn't that expensive, and they're laser copies and so the ink isn't going to run and blah 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 okay so are you guys <laughs> i know it is very retro isn't it it is very retro now when i was figuring all of this out in the beginning i was not thinking in terms of accurate you know divisions of um because i was planning to make cards but i wasn't thinking in terms of accurate measurements so that I could make the best use of all the paper. I don't do that. I just, and, and besides that, my head was in a goofy place. I wasn't feeling 100%. Uh, but 
you know, I was dealing with a sinus thing and allergies and a fever blitz, you know, the whole thing. Just being, sorry, I'm still dealing with a little bit of that. Haven't had allergy issues in years. And this, this spring, for some reason, yeah, this spring it decided to be one of those. And so what I did then was I, I just started cutting them apart. I chose to use the um, the cardstock version just because I knew that here it was going to give me a little bit more. Um, I don't have to be quite so careful with cardstock. And so I'm going to show you. All right, you ready for some sensory overload? Here you go. Okay. So these are card fronts for note cards. So I've cut them apart and then I also, because I miscut, I ended up with some that were kind of square looking and some, all of these can be cut into artist trading cards. Or because they're laser, the, um, the, uh, gel medium or matte medium or whatever won't run the ink it won't make it run and so these can be turned into bookmarks or artist trading cards or used in collage in a journal or what have you right <laughs> Elvis says it brings you back Oh, mom yelled at her for drawing all over her bell bottoms and tennis shoes. There you go. And I bet they were designed similar to this, right? Okay, so I use, as a general rule, I use this size card base. I don't make my own. You certainly can. I don't because it's easier to go buy them. Five point five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. And this is a bunch of colors, and I also have a few other colors. I keep these on hand. I'm down, getting down to the end of my reasonable colors here. I like to have lots of note cards on hand because, you know, one of the things I found out is the Studley Duck says to me, usually at the last minute, do you have a couple cards for, you know, I've got a gift I need to give. Do you have a card? So I found that not only me having cards, a supply of cards on hand to send out for my own stuff, that he seems to enjoy doing that, <laughs> dipping into my stash as well. Okay, so let's um, take one of these. I'm just going to grab a color, just a random color, and we'll stick these over out of the way. And then I decided what the best color, um, I do enjoy having a matte on them, and I decided what the best was, perhaps, was to put black underneath them. Yep, washi tape would be great. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that um, these could be. So I decided to put a black matte under it because it kind of sets it off. And um, thank you. And so then I'm going to just put a black mat under it. Now, because of the fact that these are color copies, laser copies, and because of the fact that the copy place is close by, I, as long as I don't use up my original, um, use up my original artwork, which I am famous for doing, quite honestly, which is why it's scanned into the computer in case I ever need to do it again. <clears throat> the Sudley Duck will come on when I, <laughs> when I get, we have made a deal that he will do that when we get to 30,000 subscribers here. <laughs> so, so tell your friends to subscribe. <laughs> so he's made that deal. Um, so anyway, I'm using the black to set it apart. Okay? All right. Now, 
The next question is, do I want to ink around the edge or not? I'm just going through my thought process with you. And so do I want to ink around the edge or not? So we're going to ink around the edge on this one and we'll make a decision. And because I generally ink with cobalt blue because it's close by and it's kind of, um, it's getting low on ink which means it's kind of drying out. I don't have a refill for these. It will color that white edge where you cut the paper, but it's not going to really slop a whole bunch of ink up on the top and it's going to dry quickly. But what it does, we'll see if we can find, these are not the same image, but here is, let me zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, there it is with ink around the edge on this one. And there it is without ink around the edge. So with, this is like the eye doctor, one <laughs> or two. See, I like it better with the inked edge because it helps to obscure that little white edge that goes around, around the artwork. Anyway, so. I'm going to put it on. So I have, let's see, how many did I get? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Somehow I ended up with an odd number, and the reason I did is because I screwed up one cut. <laughs> it's like, oh well, too bad, so sad. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to ink those. And while I ink those, I have a discussion for you guys. So, are you ready? Are you ready for a discussion? Now, you don't, by any means, have to participate in this discussion, but it's something I was thinking about. Yeah, the consensus in the chat, in case you're watching the recording, which, by the way, thank you for watching the recording. I appreciate you doing that. If you wouldn't mind, you know, click the thumbs up icon that would be excellent I appreciate that a lot and if you haven't subscribed I invite you to subscribe to the channel that would be also excellent um, oh and I have one other thing to tell you here in just a second let me do that while I'm while I'm thinking about it we'll come back to the, the discussion here in a minute the discussion question um, do, do, do. let me go back to the original artwork. Okay, so we're going to talk about this just a, one more second. I got to find my original color copy thing. Do, do. Hang on one second. I got to see. This is what, ha here it is. Okay. I was going to say, this is what happens when you get too many things going on in your life. All right, let me, I didn't go through this part of this. Okay, this one is where I had the, I filled up the entire piece of paper. Okay, so I filled up the entire thing. So I went ahead and extended the design all the way out. And then when I colored it, I didn't want to have just that blank area. Okay, the blank with the white background because it just looked ridiculous. So what I did was make up a background and I used the highlighters to just make up a background. Now that it's really zoomed in, you can really see that. But that's how I got the entire copy, um, which went this way. That's how I got the entire copy so that it was totally filled in in the background. And it doesn't look the same. But it's reasonably close, and the reason that I went ahead and did that is because I have access now to the whole sheet. And if I cut, when I cut this down, it isn't going to make any difference anyway. And some of these, you may see that. Okay? <laughs> Hello, Cigna. Welcome. All right, so that that's how I got a bigger sheet, and you'll be able to see on this one. Now that I've pointed that out to you, you can see this is part of the, the original background and this is part of the background that I put in with the highlighters. That's fine. I'm good with it. Okay. 
Okay, so discussion while I'm inking. Um, so here's the question for you. And don't feel like any pressure to participate if you don't wish to. And um, I will keep working here. So if you're, if you don't like stuff like this, that's perfectly fine. Question for you is, the word for today is expectations. Okay, expectations. And so my question for you about the word expectations, just let that settle around for a minute. Think about, you know, just expectations. What does that bring up when you, when you think about it? And the question is, do you struggle with, and now expectations are one thing, okay? You know, I expect that the sun's going to come out tomorrow. I do expect that. I expect that I'm going to see the moon tonight more, you know, probably. I don't get all wigged out if um, tomorrow I wake up and it's a cloudy day as opposed to a bright sunny day. Sometimes it affects my mood a little bit, but I don't get all wigged out about it. Some people do get really upset because, you know, the weather is supposed to accommodate them somehow. Uh, but, you know, it's a reasonable expectation that this you know there's going to be light in the area where i live now if you live in norway or the arctic circle or whatever and, you know it's one of those times of year where it's either perpetually dark or perpetually light you know for a certain period of time then you know your expectation might be different right so there are certain things that you can expect i expect to be able to breathe you know, for the most part, when I get up and I start uh, coming to consciousness in the morning and stuff, I expect to be able to breathe, you know. There's a lot of things that I expect. Expectations. So the question for you guys is this. What, what happens to you? Do you struggle with um, unmet expectations so expectations are one thing unmet expectations are something different so what I'm going to do here now is I'm using this um, this is not score tape this is a double-sided tape that I learned about from Nick the booksmith and it's on I'm not putting a link into it myself because I didn't come up with it. Nick the Booksmith did. She uses it. And I figure if Nick uses it, it's good enough for me. Um, but you can go to her channel and you can find it. Or if one of the mods want to find it, you can find it in her list of, I don't know if it's her list of favorites or booksmithables or I don't know what it is. Anyway. So that's where this uh, tape came from. And it's I think it's very reasonably priced. And you get it in a bunch of different widths. And it is quite sticky. It, it is a sticky tape. I don't know that I would put a book together with it. But it's still a sticky, sticky tape. Okay. Is Skinny Cat here? Hello, Carrie. How are you? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to have you join us. So you can always, with a double-sided tape, you can always just just tear it or, I don't know, this, when I put it on here, I try to get it pretty close to the edge, but not exactly on the edge. And then I just use this little ruler, which is from... It's a uh, an Olipfa O L I P F A ruler, six inch ruler. That's what I'm using. I use it because it has a nice little kind of sharp-ish edge, and so that's what I use to tear against. Don't have to do this; it just happens to be what I like to do. Anyway. Okay, so back to the discussion. 
expectations versus unmet expectations. Last week when we had the eclipse, how many of you who experienced some of that were a little bit unsettled by that eclipse because you expect that in the middle of the day, oh, I didn't get that on straight, oh well. Too bad, so sad, it'll still hold. Um, it's a little unsettling when you look out and it's two o'clock in the afternoon and it's supposed to be bright and sunshiny. That's what you expect it to be this time of year, nice and sunshiny, where I am. Now where you may be may, may, might be a different, different deal. But where I am, <clears throat> the expectation is it's going to be bright and sunshiny and wonderful. And instead, it is looking like twilight, you know, dusk and twilight and just odd. Um, <clears throat> so were any of you unsettled by that at all? And nobody has to answer these questions. It's just purely food for thought. When Barb um, gets caught up in her thought process, this is the kind of thing that goes through my goes through my head. I start wondering about things, and I reflect back on discussions I've had with different teachers in my life. One of whom is my son, who is an amazing teacher, has been an amazing teacher in my life. Um, he has been teaching me since he was um, in my belly. And he, I have learned many, many, many things from him, all, most of which, I was going to say all of which, but I don't know that I'm grateful for everything I learned from him, but I am grateful for most of it. Um, anyway, I started reflecting on some of those things while I would, because when you're coloring and you're doing things that are kind of mindless, it's easy for your head to wander into esoteric concepts so yeah there's a people in the chat are discussing what it was like Barbara says that expectations are the ad adult task in her mind you have to manage our own work on detaching from the outcome and whatever else they bring up yep good good thought there good thought so <clears throat> how do you, I mean, it's, I agree with that, totally agree with that, but how, what are different ways, and not necessarily the way that you deal with it, but what are ways that you can deal, or that are possible, let's put it that way, ways that are possible ways to deal with unmet expectations. What are some of the ways that you can deal with unmet expectations? And I'm talking positive or negative ways of dealing. This is just food for thought. Okay. So what are Because you got to have something to talk about when you're doing repetitive stuff. You know, you can't just sit here and uh, watch me tape a million cards. Although they're fun to see when they're all put together, aren't they? Hello, Dorothy. Because some of the ways that you can deal with unmet expectations are you can, you know, people will deal with um, distraction. Sometimes that's a positive thing. Sometimes it's not. It can be a uh, dipping into alcohol or drugs or maybe not illicit drugs, but maybe too many um, prescription drugs. 
you know, that are perfectly legal because, by golly, a doctor prescribed them. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that taking more than you should is going to be positive, but it will get you away from feeling the feelings. Um, what else can you... I'll look at the chat here in a minute. Some of the other things that uh, television is a distraction, a great way to get away from um, just to take your head out of the game or music or YouTube videos, one after the other after the other. TikTok videos, another one. TikTok is something I have never gotten into. Thank you that I've never done that. There are a couple of rabbit holes that I don't go down because I know that if I go down those rabbit holes, I'm going to be in so much trouble and they're just going to eat up my time. TikTok's one. Pinterest is another one. Um, okay, so what I have here now is I have these all have uh, tape on the back. So before I stick these together, I'm going to go ahead and take the mats. One... This is a thicker cardstock. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I have some extra ones. I try to cut the black mats, uh, have a bunch of them on hand, just because it's a good idea to just have them ready. I also have various colors of mats. I don't know if I have any in here or not. Let's see. Maybe in this one. I have some. I usually have a bunch of different colors of mats. I'm just stuck in you. In this case, I just have the have some craft and some white, but there's probably some other cardstock mats hiding around here somewhere, but I don't have the same at the moment. Whoops. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put tape on the back of these while I'm chatting with you. All right, let me take a look at the chat for a second. Since I brought the question up, uh, the best way to deal with unmet expectations is through communication. We are not mind readers. That's what Ruth says. Um... Evelyn said, it depends. I expect my doctor to meet his responsibilities to meet. If he doesn't, I'm looking elsewhere. Good point. Anne says, setting boundaries. And I already read what, oh, here's what Barbara Clark said. Unmet expecta expectations equals disappointment. How do we deal with that? I'm a sort of Jungian, J-U-N-G-I-A-N, Jungian, Carl Jung. And unmet expectations are a great opportunity for the psyche to speak about what it really wants. Interesting. Um, uh, and Barbara Clark said, she's responding to Ruth. She said, that is so true, Ruth, especially when someone else is disappointed because of ex their expectations of us. And Ruth was saying, the best way to deal with it is to communicate because we're not mind readers. You know, I um, one of the things that I like to say, and I have used this on my kids, is uh, I, my mind reading license expired. <laughs> yep. Uh, Tracy Dean, when things get tough for me, I have a bingo app that really helps me even out. Uh, even you out. That's good. So, you know, if it's a positive thing, hey, Peggy says prayer. Uh, unspoken expectations are a huge problem for many. Agreed that communication is a key. Yeah. So, yeah, so interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? Okay, let's go back to this. So, let's see. Um, just for the record, I struggle with unmet expectations from time to time. And you know, one of the things I've discovered, because I'm not a spring chicken, I know all of you thought I was. I know you did. And I really appreciate you thinking I was, but I'm not. Um, 
I've been doing this, the work that I'm doing here, which sometimes is more like playing. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and uh, for I don't even know how many years, 15 years? I don't know. It's a long time. And so I've, I've been thinking about stuff for a, a lot of my years of life. Whoop. Well, that wasn't that wasn't so good. I expected that to tear evenly, and it most certainly did not. Oh, well. Okay, and so on the mat, because the mat is going to attach this to the card, I'm going to put a little piece down the middle of it. Okay, uh, but, you know, I still deal with unmet expectations and I've noticed that other people do around me. It's like one of the things when you're working on something in your own head, um, it's it's really easy. I'm just going to cut that off. That's going to cause me a problem if I don't. It's really easy to notice that because it's processing in your own head. It's like it's it's this kind of thing. It's that reticular activating device in your head where you know you buy a new refrigerator or you want to buy a refrigerator that's what you're after you need a new refrigerator and so you're going to look and see what um, you need to see if there's refrigerators on sale and you look in the you know online or in the paper or whatever and you go oh it's <laughs> I'm so grateful because um, refrigerators are on sale at you know wherever some appliance store but what you don't really what you don't realize is that they're on sale almost all the time because that's how they get you to come in you know they at price at one thing and then they whoop all right every once in a while the the tape just kind of has a mind of its own um and you know but you hadn't noticed it before because you didn't need a refrigerator before you know and but now or you buy a car um, for example the car that I bought several years ago used car and I knew one of my friends had one of these cars but I had never paid any attention to it um, because I didn't think I would ever have this kind of car and I bought and then a lady ran over me an 87 year old lady was driving a car and she ran over you know ran a light ran a stop sign actually and totaled my car didn't hurt me especially although I ended up having to be treated for a while because of whiplash um, but you know it was a treatable doable doable thing wasn't like the end of the world by any means anyway but I bought bought this after a lot of searching and you know debate and you know am I gonna finance it am I gonna pay for it outright you know blah 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 and fortunately my son came through to help me make those decisions because Claus man was not able to help make those decisions and didn't care to make those decisions and that is one of those things we had always done together you know and I guess like I didn't realize I didn't realize what was going on with him at the time but you know reflection hindsight 2020 don't you know and um, anyway after I got the car it's like it was a RAV4 and still enjoying driving that car appreciate having it can't tell you how much I appreciate I appreciate the fact that I have this car that I get to drive it every time I get in it I am grateful and I express gratitude for having it etc but I couldn't believe how many RAV4s there were out there I was just shocked I thought this must be this must be amazing that there are so many RAV4s out there you know um, this must be a new thing no it wasn't new it was only because I hadn't um, hadn't ever noticed before because my brain wasn't locked in on that now I saw plenty of Ford Tauruses because that was the car I drove then prior to this car and I'd driven it for years like 
really years. <laughs> okay, really years. It, you know, it was starting to die. It didn't have very many miles on it, but it was starting to die. And it was starting to nickel and dime us. Like, the heater went out sometimes. And um, I live in an area where you need heat. Now, air conditioner, uh, it's really hard for me to do without because the humidity here is brutal. But I could justify doing without the heater um, because I could just put a blanket over my lap. <laughs> And, so, and then when the and then when the heater would take a notion to work, then I would toss the blanket in the back seat. But I wasn't going to pay the amount of money that they were asking for a heater core or whatever it was. It was expensive, is what it was, because they were going to have to dismantle the entire front end of the car to get to the part. The part didn't amount to anything, but the the labor was horrendously expensive. So, anyway, I got off on that. I don't know where I sidetracked myself. Anyway, unmet expectations. Circling back. Um, so, I'm not super young, but you know, one of the things I've realized and noticed is that when you have unmet expectations, it's not something that you get over. Uh, one of the teachers in my life, I used to say, when am I going to get this? You know, whatever the thing was that I was dealing with. It's like, when am I going to get this? And the response was, oh, you're never going to totally get it. You're just going to get another chance. Um, you're just going to get another chance. I'm like, oh no, that is bad. That is some seriously bad news right there. I just, I'm never going to get, I felt like such a failure on one hand. And on the other hand, it was a huge relief, you know, huge relief. Because it's like, oh, I'm not a failure after all, just because I am getting this, um, I'm dealing with this thing again. And I, can, I don't even remember what it was. It didn't have anything to do with expectations. It was something else that I was, you know, figuring out, dealing with, whatever. And, I, you know, it's like I always have felt like, you know, once the concept or the, the puzzle piece slots into place, then I shouldn't have to worry about that again because it's like, oh, that makes sense, you know. And then sometimes, no, not necessarily. Okay, so. Where do you find unmet, if, if any of you, those of you that, that are dealing or can, are hearing me with the unmet expectations, what are the toughest unmet expectations for you in your life? Like, you know, if the, if I get up in the morning and the sun, is, it's not a, I, the weatherman says it's supposed to be a uh, beautiful sunny day, but I wake up and some weather storm has moved in and it's cloudy instead. You know, I don't generally get all upset at the weatherman. I think it is one of the only professions that you can be wrong a whole lot of the time and still get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody says anything about that. But where are the places in your life? Um, or what do you think? You don't have to use personal experience. What do you think is the hardest place for to deal with unmet expectations? And we've probably sort of already touched on this, but, you know, and this is not a right or wrong discussion, by the way. This is just a discussion to make you think. Um, it's a discuss. It's because I've had I've colored too much this week, which is mindless for me. I have spent too much time with my head down coloring and doing things that don't require me uh, to solve problems. Once I, if I'm in the problem solving mode, it's a whole different ball game because my 100% of my concentration goes to 
that thing. But once I don't need to do that and I'm in a repetitive action space, then it's a whole different, my, my life goes, my head goes in a whole different place. Okay, so I have black mats taped. I have the artwork taped. I have seven of these prepared. So we're going to stick these together. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. Um, good discussion going on. Unspoken expectations. Ah, unspoken expectation as opposed to unmet. Those are not necessarily the same thing. Unspoken expectations. A huge problem for many. Yep. And unspoken expectations do become, can become a problem in a relationship. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. This is kind of, it can be kind of a deep subject to get into. Hello, Orange. Um... It's a good good discussion going on in the chat. Yeah. Good uh, good discussion going on in the chat. Ah, Angela says one of her unmet expectations is people not purchasing the items that you've created to sell. Yeah, that's true. That is true. When you make things to sell to other people, um, and you think <laughs> you think that you've gotten you've gotten the the, the whatever it is either it is that you've created the thing that you're pretty sure people are going to want to buy or somebody says you know one of my favorite things one of my favorite all-time things is a gal i used to work for years and years ago and i would make uh, samples and bring them in uh, it was a sewing machine store and I would make samples and I'd take them in or sometimes it wasn't samples for the store it was just me you know making something and invariably she would say oh you need to make those and sell them I'm like okay a I don't want to make them and sell them okay I don't want to because the, the pleasure for me is in making the first one. <laughs> Why do you think I go to the store and ha and pay for them to make color copies? Because I don't want to sit here and cl color every sheet of these designs. <laughs> Not unless I have a reason to figure out some other something. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the same thing over and over and over. Some people are great with that. Some people are super great with repetitive things and doing you know they don't mind that at all my mom was one of those my mom didn't mind doing the same thing over and over and over again that didn't bother her not me no not me my mom and if my head gets in the way here i apologize my mother and i were very different about that you know she didn't mind um the repetitive action of doing something, man, that was so not me. You know, I I want to figure out, I don't know how I let the backing get away from me there, but anyway, um, she, she could do the same thing again and again and again. I could not. I want to figure it out. And, you know, it's like a knitted knitting pattern. You know, I liked, this is back in the day before knitting became such a thing, but I liked figuring out the complicated uh, knitting patterns, you know, color work and stuff like that. I loved figuring that stuff out. But do you know what was the, the thing for me? I can't even tell you how many sweaters I had that had the front, the back, and one sleeve. 
I finally smartened up and realized I could cast on both sleeves on a circular needle and I could knit them at the same time. And that was the only way I was ever going to have a sweater with two sleeves in it. Oh, the only way. Because once I had done one sleeve, I was over it. The same thing with a cardigan. If I did the back of the sweater and did one front, but didn't do... It, it would have the back, the front, and then I would take a break and do a sleeve. <laughs> so, you know, the rest of the sweater was just, I had, I had several bags of sweaters that were like that. I can't, I can't even, I can't even, yeah, it's like, whatever. Okay, so there is our um, little piece of 60s, 70s inspired art on a black mat. And then we'll, once I get the rest of these put together, we will stick them on some card bases. Sound good? Yeah. So anyway, I guess I expected that the sweater would knit itself. You know, I, I just, I need that extra stimulation of, um, Of the figuring out things that is what I like I don't like the Ooh, hold on a minute I gotta I am st I, this is not my forte people this is not my forte right here uh, if you get a card from me and the mat is crooked um, sorry sorry about that <laughs> Or the artwork is on the mat in a crooked manner. Yes, I apologize. I apologize in advance because it's handmade. I am not a machine and I typically don't put the things on straight. <laughs> exactly, Terry. <laughs> she says there are probably women out there with one arm that would really appreciate that. Yep, that, that could be. It could be. I, I don't even know what happened to those sweaters because I know I didn't finish them. Oh, and one time, one of my sisters asked me, and I don't know what in the world made me say yes, uh, asked me to make matching sweaters for her and her husband. Oh, that is that was torture, man. That was absolute torture. The first one was fun. All right, let's see if we can do this again. The first one is fun. The second one is just horrible. Oh, don't stick, don't stick, don't stick. Okay, hold on just a minute. Let me get this on here. I can at least get part of it on straight. It will help. Straight-ish. Straight-ish is good enough. Okay, straight-ish. Um, yeah, it was, well, that, that really was bad. Oh, well, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's what it is. I can't, I, I'm not good at this part. I'm, I'm okay, but I'm not great. You know, uh, probably because I didn't cut it straight. <laughs> ah. No, it wasn't Peggy. It was not Peggy. Um, okay, so, as I have discovered, and, you know, just by virtue of I have more time to think now than I did for a while when I was taking care of Claus Man, actively taking care of him, the, at that point in time, Every day was a new day when I was actively caring for him. Every day was a new day. Every day was a problem-solving day. And, uh, you know, there, I poured all of my creativity in at the, that point in time when I wasn't able to do much, you know, streaming or anything else all of my creativity went into figuring out ways better ways to take care of him better products to take care of him better systems for taking care of him you know all of it was all of my creativity went into that subject you know and 
and what if, all the what if scenarios and all that kind of stuff. So my creativity went into that at that time. Um, you know, so even that, even the caregiving, active caregiving experience became an avenue for figuring stuff out. Um, do I want to do that again? You know, it may be required of me sometime, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be going to go into the caregiving field. You know, that's not my, that's not my forte either. So, all right, here we go again. Let's go. You'd think by the time I get to the seventh one, I'd have this down pat, wouldn't you? I'm not to the seventh one yet, so. Oh, I just, I get started, and then it hits one of those backing tapes, and it's slick. Okay, good enough. Um, so, <coughs> the thing is that no matter how old you are, or young, you're going to have disappointments and unmet expectations. So I think one of the things that was a great challenge for me was helping my son. Um, you know, one of the hardest emotions for me to watch him ex experience was disappointment. And that comes from the unmet expectation. And I wish I'd been smart enough to explain that to him or talk to him about it back then, but I wasn't. So... So some of the things that I've learned as I've gone through this pensive thought process time is um, that the expectation thing changes, i found, at least for me, and it may not be true for anybody else, because we're all at different life experiences and different stages and different, you know, everythings. But for me... I've realized that ooh, don't go yeah you're just gonna be a little crooked because like I said sometimes I cut them crooked and I try real hard not to but you know I'm not Jennifer McGuire who is or Christina Warner who are wonderful card makers and who do this stuff and can put it on nice and square and straight. I am not that person. <laughs> if you want to know how to do that, you got to go watch somebody other than me. <clears throat> I would call. I would fall into the artsy fartsy category of card makers. <laughs> That's where I fall. Um, but I have realized that the um, I finally realized that. A lifetime of experiences this is this has to do with people who are aging which I am um, your lifetime of experiences shape you but you know nobody else can really totally understand that about you um, because unless you grew up even if you grew up in the same family in the same family group you still have different expert you have different experiences um you know our parents had me when i was like they were like 41 or 42 or something like that i was the last kid of five kids when i by the time i was 10 all of my siblings were gone from home uh, so i grew up you know my teenage years those last you know, really important formative years, those were all done uh, by parents that were different from the ones that raised my sisters, you know. And so, uh, same people, but they'd grown. They had different, you know, different lifetime of uh, experiences and all those kinds of things. So, you know, like, yeah. Um we were different people, raised by different parents. And, um, you know, such is life. Okay, I'm just pulling some cards out of this, card bases out of here. I have better things to do than make cards or card bases. Uh, therefore, I buy them. 
and I buy them pre-done because I do not want to waste the time cutting up and folding card bases. Because if you think I have a hard time putting these on straight, you just watch me try to make a card base. Yeah. Card bases and I don't get along, therefore I, it's why I buy them pre-made. Okay, I'm just looking to see if I have any other ones that are unique colors. I do totally enjoy buying them pre-done, <laughs> especially a wide variety of colors. Um, okay. It's a good discussion going on in the chat. Good discussion. Thank you guys for humoring me and talking and listening and, you know, just kind of... Um, talking but anyway if what I found out or discovered or thought through or what you know pick one is that um, you know the older I get the more I realize that you know we all come from different life experiences we come from different um, different everything you know like one time I was I was in a group and there was a person in the group that didn't feel like she belonged in the group and and so she was looking for a way to get out of the group and rather than just say you know I don't want to be part of this group anymore she had to make other people feel you know kind of I don't know that her intention was to make people feel bad but that's kind of what ended up happening and she made assumptions. There's another good word, assumptions. Assumptions and expectations are kind of closely related. They're, they're cousins, don't you think? And she made some assumptions that, um, that were sweeping assumptions and, and kind of on the, on the cusp of being offensive with the, um, the assumptions that she made and so it's like, man, you could have gone all day long without saying some of that stuff. You could have just checked out and said, I'm just not good, a good fit for this group. <laughs> Instead, she had to insult pretty much everybody on her way out. Anyway, such so it goes. Okay, so let's um, look at these and just kind of... Um, this is where I just sort of play around and then whatever seems like, yeah, that's the right one, then that's the one that I'll use. That's not too bad. Kind of like that one better. Let's try it on a couple more. That one's okay too. Yeah, let's go with the pink one doesn't really matter a whole lot does it all right let's match these up while we're while we're doing okay so there's that one it really doesn't matter a whole lot let's just spread them out it doesn't matter a whole lot what goes with what just because okay good enough and I try to just simply um, go with my gut on when I'm doing stuff like this just go with my first and gut reaction to things otherwise I could say stay here and I could fiddly fart around with this all day and all night and I have learned that that is not a good um, that's not a good thing for me to do it is just not a good thing for me to do now I'm getting in my head about this okay we're gonna do this one and call it good okay good enough good enough oh you missed all kinds of things Evelyn you we solved the world's problems Evelyn while you were gone oh my goodness yes we solved the entire world's problems and you missed it all oh it's so sad I am just kidding you One of the things I've realized, too, 
is okay so what I'm going to do now I do have some notes over here to kind of keep me on track but that doesn't mean I'll necessarily get back to it <laughs> but I'll try um, I don't even know what I was going to say Uh, I can decide whether I want to ink the card base later. I don't necessarily have to do that at this point. Also, um, I look at this, and if one way feels better than the other, I'll do that. I like it this way the best, so that's the way I'm going to put it. And so now we're going to see we have a second shot at screwing up, um, getting it on here straight. Not bad. Okay, not bad. I do encourage you, if you have the ability, to make copies of your art. Whatever your art is, if you have a chance to make copies of it, then you can use your art to make cards and send them out to people. And I will tell you, one of the best things you can do is to make somebody's day by sending them a card. You can take a card like this, and you can either leave it just like this, or you can use some of those stick-on quotes and phrases from Tim Holtz. And I know that um, Barbara Gray at U uh, Clarity over in the UK has a bunch of them. Um, uh, Diane Reevely, there are some that are super snarky that are funny. Uh, there are some that are super encouraging, which are great, but sending cards to people um, is one of the most encouraging things you can do I've told you guys this before that when I was going through when I was deep in the weeds with um, Claus man getting cards from people was one of the things that kept me from losing my cork and every time I would feel like I was absolutely at the end of it um, there were several people who came through and they didn't even know that they were coming through but they would they would come through and they would send me cards of encouragement there was one person that sent me regularly sent me a card every single month like clockwork and I will tell you that was one of the most incredible things um, that happened to me during that experience and as a result of that has made me acutely aware one of my new words is acutely <laughs> made me acutely aware of how much you can impact someone's life just simply by sending them or giving them a card yeah okay so there we go. So we got two done. We're going to do five more while we're at the end of this very esoteric discussion today. So, yeah, I saw what uh, Purple Nana just put in the chat. She says she's less sensitive today. And, you know, there, it's funny about that because sometimes I'm less sensitive and sometimes I'm actually more sensitive at this age um, but I am acutely aware that um, the wasting of time whether it's the wasting of time um, because I'm just I can muddle you know I can muddle thinking about something you know oh I should be you know I can I can absolutely um, get in the weeds thinking about what I should be doing, you know, and then not get anything done because I'm too busy thinking about what I should be doing, you know, or I get my arms full of stuff. I live in a house that has three levels, and so I get my arms full of stuff to go because, you know, I don't want to have to make two trips. And so I'll get my arms all full of stuff, and I'll be headed down to the laundry room which is on the lowest level so I'm going to head down to the laundry room and on the way to the laundry room um, I stop to drop something off you know um, in the kitchen or the studio or whatever 
and while I'm there it's like I set the stuff down that I'm taking to the other level and I set something down because oh I see this thing you know the cat box needs to be cleaned or the you know whatever or chances you know deposited some of his stomach contents on the carpet and it's like oh I better clean that up while I'm here you know and the next thing you know you're I'm just you know spinning my wheels and that is uh, equates to a whole lot of wasted time and the older I get the more I go you know girl you need to stop that <laughs> stop wasting time because you don't know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow you know just stop wasting time and enjoy the moment and quit expecting things of people places you know it can be relationships it can be you know stuff on TV it can be um, expectations of kids it can be you know whatever stop just stop it you know just stop it okay we're gonna do this one this way it's wasting time and time equates to energy you know you only have a you have a limited amount of both so why should you spend why should you waste it I mean it's a commodity um, energy is a commodity time is a commodity so why waste it worrying about what somebody else thinks or what somebody else says or what you know blah 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 okay that's the way I had it I think <laughs> it's not it's the way it's gonna go okay so the oh I think some of it is just a matter of you know the aging process and going yeah and some of it too is you know having been married for a long long time and losing a spouse and contemplating you know remarrying and a new relationship you know combining forces combining families you know to some to some extent you know it's it's a very pensive kind of time which can also then lead to expectations that maybe are not made that are not met <clears throat> Yeah, Evelyn's talking about um, putting her foot in her mouth. That is true, and it's easy to do, you know? It's easy to do, and sometimes I think um, we think that we have, well, sometimes we think we have more wisdom than we actually have, although we do get, you know, just by virtue of living more days on this earth, you do have um more life experience, but there are plenty of people with a lot of life experience that are dumber than rock. Um, okay, so as you can tell, as I am just blathering on, um, lots of thoughts running through my head this week. Lots of thoughts. Uh, another thing that makes these cards, uh, when you have that extra mat, the extra black mat, or a different color of mat, um, it, did I put that on there right? You also have to watch the opening of the card to see if you put it on here the way you wanted to. Having the extra mat kind of helps dis, you know, distract your eye a little bit from getting hung up in the oh it's a little crooked it's a fraction of an inch off you know okay so we want it this way I don't know it can go either way on this one I actually kind of like it No, we're going to go this way. Okay. Yes. See? I can get hung up in that sometimes. Yes, I can. Bye, Joan. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. 
Glad you're here. Hello and kind regards to Paul. So I'm trying to do better at um, giving up wasting time. I think that's what I should give up for Lent. That's probably sacrilegious in some regard. But boy, that would be a good thing to, that would be worthy of giving up for an extended period of time is wasting time. Give it, give it up. Now that doesn't mean to make yourself guilty, you know, about, oh, you have to be busy 100% of the time because you don't. You know, it's all about balance. You have to rest. You have to let yourself rest. When I was taking care of Claus Man, especially as the that last year wore on, the more the more I had to rest because my energy was decreasing, you know, and I had to rest a whole lot more than I did in the beginning because in the beginning it was a shock, you know, when he fell and it's like that it was such a shock to my system it's like you have all this it's like you have this perpetual shot of adrenaline in the beginning and then as it wears on it becomes a marathon uh, you know you have to you have to do more resting and more resting and more resting because you you literally have to or you can't continue right so you know it's all about balance it's all about balance Yeah, Terry said, that's a really good point. Terry said, there's a fine line between lowering expectations and settling for less. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good that's a good thought too. Okay, so there the point of this discussion was not to solve any issue. It was just to think. It was just to think. And it you know, that's what happens when I sit in color. <laughs> do something repetitive my head goes mm. it goes trickling off into the into the it, I go from it's like it's like the thing of carrying all the stuff down the stairs and getting distracted my thoughts will do that they ping pong you know they ping pong from this to that to this to that to the other thing you know to well yeah, what about I don't know well let's see you know so there you go. Okay, so let us take a look at the end result of the cards here. <sighs> so we have seven cards that are made. And if you don't, if you want to know how they're made, you can watch Monday night and today and you'll find out. Okay, so there's another one. And I will give you a... Um, a shot of all of them here in a minute. I love having the choice of the different colors of, of card bases. The black is a definite unifying grounding kind of situation going on. Depending on what color you put in the back in the card base can affect and bring out the different colors like this brings out more of that background. So it just totally depends on on uh, what you want to bring out. So I'm just going to just kind of stick these in a, in a little mass right here so you can see what they look like. And then these strips, leftover strips, will make some great bookmarks. And these will make some really good ATCs, which are artist trading cards. And I'll still have scraps left over because this is completely because I read the ruler wrong. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, what can I say? I never was known for being a math genius. All right. Um. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ruth. A little ADHD ping pong stuff. Yep. All right, thank you for being here today. It is um, the end of my two hours with you for today. And um, let me know if you do anything like this. Do you repurpose your artwork? Do you make artwork for the purpose of making cards? Another thing you can do with cards like this is you can make a set of them, you know, six or ten or whatever, eight, I don't know, I don't know, four, whatever and use those as a gift give them as a gift to other people so that they can use your art 
to give to, you know, to write cards and give to other people if you want to do that. It makes a great gift. Now, the caveat to this is be sure that you sign your cards, sign your work. You created it, and just because I took it and had it mechanically reproduced does not mean it is not my artwork. I drew these, you know, used inspiration that I saw different places, but the colors are mine, the inspiration, or the... Um, designs are mine the background certainly was mine because it was an accident and so there is that all right thank you for being here i'm going to let you go and um, i will be back on monday night at 7 p.m eastern 6 central and whatever else in the rest of the world i will be back then and um, what else I've said? VIP class is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Those of you VIP members, your email should be in your inbox right now. I will see you before you know it. So until then, remember to get creative because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.